Real color? I guess we'll find out now, won't we? In today's video, I'll be testing out AK's new line of lacquer acrylic paints. I'll be testing them out for compatibility, durability, brushability, and how they spray. So let's get real. All right. So what I plan to do in this test is to first off mix one of these colors here with all these thinners and see how the AK performs using different brands of thinners. And then I'll do a brush test on bare plastic and primed plastic. And then we'll take those same paints that we mixed up with the different thinners and see how they spray over at the spray booth. So let's get to it. All right, so I'm going to use the AK 4BO and the call number on it is RC073. So just give it a shake. And as you can see, it looks fairly thick. And I'm going to place some in each container. And then once I get the uh, paint in here, we'll start mixing up the paint and see what we come up with here. All right, let's start with uh, Mr. Color Leveling Thinner. I'm expecting the Mr. Color Leveling Thinner and the Lacquer Thinner to mix really well, just because these are lacquer-based acrylics. And as you can see, it's mixing up pretty good. Add a little more thinner in there. Yeah, that looks more the way I would use it if I was airbrushing. And there, as you can see, it's not separating. It's not getting grainy or anything on the side of the cup. So that's good. So Mr. Leveling Thinner works well. Now we'll try the Tamiya Lacquer Thinner. And again, I'm expecting this to, I'm expecting this to mix up rather similar to the Mr. Leveling Thinner. And it might have gone a little thinner than the Mr. Leveling Thinner, but again, you can see on the side of the cup, it's making, mixing nice. There's no graininess to it. It's flowing down the cup. So that would be good to uh, airbrush as well. Okay, now we'll try the Tamiya X20A. And this is this is an acrylic thinner, made specifically for Tamiya paints. So it looks like it's gone. It's gone a little brown. and grainy. X20A, I don't know if that would be... doesn't look very compatible to me. I don't know, I'm not sure about the X20A. That didn't test, seem to test out very well. Now we'll try the Vallejo acrylic thinner. Hmm. That's not looking good. All right. Not compatible at all with Vallejo Airbrush Thinner. As you can see, it's turned into a big, goopy mess. Okay. Too good, too bad. Let's try the Ultimate Airbrush Thinner. These guys say that their thinner is good with all paints. Let's see. Let's try a mix here. Again. Nope. Thanks to goop. So far the acrylic thinners are not faring well. Alright, next is plain old alcohol. Give that a go. See how that does. That one appears to be better. Just give it a little more. Now I don't have the uh, the thinner that they recommend for this paint. 
but I've seen it done by some other channels and it seems to work fairly well too. And there you can see, appears to be fairly smooth with the alcohol. So alcohol seems to work as well. A great success! Let's try Windex, and Windex has ammonia in it. We'll be able to tell you right away, and I don't know, I see if you can see that already, it's kind of gumming on the bottom of the cup. I'm not going to use the back of the brush this time, I'm going to just, or use the bristles I'm going to use. And as you can see, that is not compatible at all. We're getting clumping and graininess. So, Windex. Do not use Windex. Now, the last one. H2O. Water. Let's see how that works. Wow. Okay. Water does not mix with this paint at all. My consensus on this one is... Uh, no, do not use water, as you can see. Totally turns to gum. To me, it looks like water definitely will not mix. Windex does not mix. Alcohol works. Ultimate Airbrush Cleaner does not work, or thinner, sorry. Vallejo Airbrush Thinner will not work. X20A, it seems to have mixed, but it turned to weird colors. So, Mr. Leveling Thinner, Lacquer Thinner, alcohol and that's it the rest will not work with ak paints so it looks like our only compatibility is alcohol mr leveling thinner and lacquer thinner with the ak so i think they truly are a lacquer based acrylic you know you can still see the the mr leveling thinner is still still good the to me a lacquer thinner it's not separating it's still good the pure alcohol is still good so there you go all right I'm gonna give the AK one more shot here with water just so you can see I'm using bottled water I have nothing in the cup there the reason why I'm doing this a second time is because I forgot the water that I had had a little bit of dish soap in it so maybe that made a difference so I'll give them the benefit of the doubt and I will mix up a different color this time I'll try their Egyptian sand RC 101 we'll see how that mixes up let's put a little water in there I'm just gonna take a bit here with a clean brush yeah yeah again it's not working I don't even have to go any further as you can see that is pure water in there you can see it's kind of mixing but not really look how gummy that is you know, you can see how it's stuck on the brush. It's just, ugh, it's a big, goopy mess. So, again, you know, don't use water. It is not compatible with water at all. Okay, next test. We will try some brush painting on bare plastic and a plastic that has had a coat of Tamiya white primer. I'm going straight up right out of the bottle. So let's try it on bare plastic first. And as you can see, that brush is pretty good. All right, let's try uh, putting a second coat over this now that it's dry. You can see it's dry there. And it's it's gone very matte, so that's a good sign. And let's see what happens when we put a second coat over. It's pulling a little bit, but it doesn't seem to be affecting the paint too much let's see how it levels out but i don't think it's a paint that you could continually go over because it is that lacquer based and i am cleaning my brush with to me a lacquer thinner and that uh, also alcohol seems to clean it off really nice too so you can use either one of those let's try the other colors here and again it, it brushes quite smoothly 
So you could probably do touch-ups with this paint. So if you are spraying it and you had to do a little touch-up, it looks like you can brush paint. Let's see how it plays with the, the green here. It is lifting that green, or it's regenerating the green. So I'm not sure how long you'd have to leave this green to dry before you brushed over top of it. You definitely can't paint over it right away with a different color. Brush painting anyway. Let's try their flat white. See how that looks. And I'm going to use this to try the flat white on. And this is just plastic I'm painting this on too. So the coverage isn't bad. We'll see how that levels out, but um, as it stands now, it's a little streaky. Mind you, we are painting white here too. Let's try it on primed plastic here. It is very thick. We'll see how it levels out once it's dry. And I'm curious because this is a lacquer based primer that I've sprayed on here. It's the Tamiya primer. So I'm, I'm a little concerned that it might want to lift that primer because it is lacquer based. But so far so good. It doesn't seem to be affecting it at all. I think they've created a nice German primer color for sure. We'll just let that sit for a couple minutes and then come back and we'll take a look how it dried out. All right, another test that I want to run is a mixing test. So I'm going to try mixing the AK paints with model color, model air, the MIG acrylic colors, the AK acrylic colors, and then the Tamiya brand. I'm thinking that the Tamiya brand will mix with this just because they are acrylic lacquers. Uh, I'm not sure about these, but I guess we'll find out. Let's start with the model color. Then we'll go with the model air. It's a similar color. Then we'll try the MIG, the AK, and finally we'll put in the Tamiya here. Time for the mix test. And that seems to be fine. So, we know the Tamiya is compatible, and I kind of figured that. Let's try the, uh, the AK here. Nope. Look at that. There's the proof. Proof is in the pudding. So do not mix AK. <laughs> do not mix the AK acrylic with the AK lacquer. They are totally two different paints. All right, this is the MIG acrylic. It looks like we have glue again. And that's kind of what I figured would happen. So, nope. And then we'll do Vallejo. And right away it starts gumming up. As you can see, that's what I figured. And the final one is the model color. And I am know it's going to do the same thing. And there you go. Gum. The only one that it mixes with is the Tamiya paints. Don't try mixing acrylics with, with the AK. It is a no-go. Time to check the durability of the paint. Now I've got three samples here. I've put the white on a very glossy surface, straight up, no primer. And then I've got our paints here on the bare plastic and on the primed model, as you can see. So we'll start with the uh, bare plastic. I've just got a cocktail stick or a, a toothpick here. We'll see how that stands up. And I'm pressing relatively hard. Now we'll get a little more aggressive. I'm pressing quite hard and it's just starting to chip. Now I'm pressing really hard and there you can see it's starting to chip. Very durable paint, no question about it. Now let's see how it stands up on bare styrene. And I'm not pressing really hard. I've got a little force on there. Now, as you can hear, I'm really bearing down now, and it is not coming off. So, there you go. Excellent. All right, uh, let's do a masking test. This is our paint straight to plastic test, and this is the primed piece. We'll start with like a blue painter's tape. 
Let's stick that right down on there. Press it really firmly. Next, I will put a piece of Tamiya brand masking tape. It's a little lower tack. Press that down firmly. And then finally, more aggressive, just straight masking tape. Press that down as well. Do the same on the bare plastic. I'm pushing quite aggressively down on this. And we'll see how it removes. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes since I put masking tape on these two parts here. Let's try to peel off the blue painter's mask first. There's no paint pulled off. Now we'll try the Tamiya. Came off clean. And then the more aggressive masking tape. No paint removal. Let's test out this one here that had primer on it. I'm thinking this is probably going to be just as good. No problem with the with the blue tape. Excellent. Not a problem. That's some good paint. Nice. So durability as far as masking goes is excellent. All right. So the last segment will be uh, spraying the paint. We'll get to the spraying in the next segment. Okay, so what we're going to do is spray some paint on the test subject here and we'll see how these uh, three lacquers, lacquer thinners spray with uh, the AK product here. Okay, so I've mixed up the rot brown with the three different thinners and you can see they're roughly about a 60-40 mix paint to thinner so they're all pretty much as close as I could get them in a non-scientific kind of way yes yeah, science and I'm just gonna use a it's a Neo from Iwata the CN and my pressure is at 20 pounds so we'll just give that a little final mix let's get that in there Normally I'd have my, my fan on, but it's, it's fairly loud, so I'll just leave that off for today and we'll have to play unsafe for a few minutes. So AK recommends light coats, even coats. You don't want to blast it on. That seems to be going on pretty good. We will do a saturation test too to see how what happens when we do really blast the paint on but as you can see that's covering real nice and smooth So far I'm not getting any clogging or dry tip. And as you can see, that's pretty much dry, like right away it is a lacquer, so you know they do dry fast. But you know, the coverage is quite smooth and even. Very nice. Uh, quite impressed with that. Let's see how it stands up right away to a scratch test. Okay, so I think these paints need a little bit of time to cure before you go at it with a, you know, with a tooth or, you know, before you handle it too much, too aggressively anyway. But you can see it's not coming off on my finger when I'm rubbing. So good. The alcohol spray's real nice. I'll just clear my airbrush and be back with the next test. Uh, next test subject will be this uh, paint mule I have here and it's been primed with Tamiya primer yesterday and I'll be shooting on the paint with the Tamiya lacquer thinner
I'm gonna go a little heavier now. Try a little saturation here. So I've got the needle all the way back now. So I'm really laying the paint on. Getting a real cloud here. Ah, oh, man. That's some heavy shit, man. Not the healthiest way to paint. I don't recommend this, but you're not going to be able to hear me if I'm wearing my mask. Please do not try this at home. All right. Woo! And as you can see, that's pretty smooth. No drips, no runs, and here where I really saturated it, you can see that's that's already dry. That's good, that dried out nice. Good coverage. Really happy with that. Let's see how it sprays thin. So I'm going to put just a little more lacquer thinner in there. Mix that up. Okay, so I've got it at 12 pounds of pressure. And I've thinned the paint out considerably. Let's see how it sprays thin. And as you can see, that's spraying real nice. So if you're doing a tight camel pattern, you can see that would that would spray up pretty good. And again, I'm getting no tip clog. See how it models. It doesn't appear to be getting a lot of overspray, so that's good. And there you can see a pretty tight pattern there yeah I'm liking that I'll try the mr. leveling thinner next let's do our next test this is unprimed plastic straight out of the box and I'm using same airbrush same pressure 20 psi and I'm using mr. color leveling thinner so far so good it's looking nice and smooth Go a little heavier here. See how that levels out. Really saturate that side. Gone on. Without a problem. No sags. It's dry. Works just as good as any Tamiya paint. Let's do a little test on a gloss surface here. So if you're doing an aircraft and you want to scrape it through to show bare metal underneath, we'll see how that works. And you can see that's dead flat against that glossy surface. It's dry. Now let's see what happens when we go in with a little toothpick here and see. Oh, yeah. So this is alclad underneath here. But as you can see, you can get some nice chipping effects on that straight out. You don't have to use any hairspray or, or uh, chipping fluids. Anyway, you get the idea. That's the spraying portion of the video. We'll go back to the bench for final thoughts. All right, final thoughts on the AK acrylic lacquer line. As far as durability goes, uh, definitely a 10 out of 10. It really passed the scratch test and the masking test with flying colors uh, very durable paint and that's usually what you expect out of a lacquer anyway so i was figuring it would be fairly durable before i even started as far as brushability goes i'll give it a 7 out of 10. the reason for that is i don't think you could brush it over top of a different color 
just because of the nature of lacquers. If you're brushing them, they tend to want to eat through the other layers of paint. And I would probably only use it for touching up. Compatibility, you cannot use it with water. Water-based thinners don't work, like Vallejo's or any kind of acrylic thinner. Only mix it with lacquer-based thinners, like Tamiya, Mr. Leveling Thinner, their thinner. I'm sure would work fine because it's probably a lacquer based as well. Compatibility, I'll still give it a 10 out of 10. Uh, spraying, I'll also give it a 10 out of 10. It's as good as Tamiya's, uh, if not better. So that pretty much wraps up the uh, test of the AK paints. I would like to thank PM Hobbies. They are a Canadian company that sells pretty much anything you can think of for hobbies. They carry model kits, crafts and hobbies, wedding supplies, RC, and you can order online from them as well. And I will have a link at the bottom of the description. If you're interested, go there and you can check them out. Okay guys, I'll talk to you soon. Take care now. Bye bye.